Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Nathan, this is Robert Masters. So I'm super excited for the Samsung PowerBot R7040 and I'm going to do my full in-depth review. Okay, let's just jump right into it. Samsung PowerBot, the actual robot. I feel like they did a really good job. I like this design. It has a giant extractor bar. Let's flip it around here. Look at that folks. Look how big that extractor bar is. That thing is so big. It's one of the largest extractor bars in the industry. Uh, it's compared to the Nido D7, the Rubo S9. Let's go ahead and just show you that real quick. I'll say this is a little bit harder to take off than other robot vacuums. You do have to kind of push down these yellow clips and it pops off. But here's the housing and here's the extractor bar itself. Look at that folks. I like the combo style. It looks like it does really well. And for the most part, there's not many hairs wrapped around, just a couple. Very nice job, and of course you got your knobby tires, you have your charging contacts, you have five wheels I believe. Let's count those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six folks, six wheels, I don't believe that. You got all your uh, information, you got your battery, I believe right, duh, no, down here. Here's your battery folks, so if you ever have to replace your battery, it should be fairly easily. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the top part of the robot. One nice thing is I do like this touch screen here. You can do different functions. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about the top here. You got your navigation camera. You have your uh, bin system. And as you can see, it picks up a lot of uh, lucky charms. That's a really good job and it's very handy. Now, with this bin system, I would say it's a little bit hard to remove, uh, to actually empty out. There's not a simple button. You actually have to grab from these sides here, and it's a little awkward. It's like, uh, see, I can't even do it with, like, trying to do it on film here. Yeah, it's kind of hard there. Okay, see, you just try to wiggle it back and forth, and it pops out. But I do like the cyclonic technology. It does a really good job with the suction. That's both great on hardwood floors and carpet. So good job, Samsung. Hopefully, you just make this dustbin a little bit easier. And one thing to note is this takes about half the volume of the dustbin. Okay, there you go. Okay, next we have the screen down here. I like it. It's just an LED display. You got your uh, spot clean. Oh, that's nice. Look at that here, folks. Get out of there. LED. And you also have your play pause button and you got your home button. Very nice feature. Okay, let's talk about the remote control. The remote control is very handy. I've been using it for quite a while. I like that you can just drive the robot uh, with the remote control. So if you have like back problems and you can't lift the robot up, it's very handy. Uh, one thing you can do with the remote is you actually can change the two power levels on higher end robots or the higher end models like the R726. What is it? Oh, I can't even say it. The R7260, I believe. It actually has a, a even lower power setting right there. And also on the high-end models, you have a uh, little LED dot that you can control the robot with. Very cool feature. But for the most part, the R7040 provides a lot of the great features. Um, I do like all the functions. You do scheduling on the remote. You also can turn the Wi-Fi on and off down here. Very cool. I like that Samsung provides that option. Of course, you can control with this smartphone using smart things. I will definitely show you that on this video in a few seconds. We'll do the connection or connectivity video or clip of that shortly. Okay, let's talk about the base and then I'll show you how to pair up the robot. Here's the base. I actually like the charging base. Uh, look at that, folks. There's some nice rubber feet down there so it won't slip around. And another nice thing is you can wrap around your cord like this. Your if I can do it right. Okay, like this, and then you can either go from the left or right. Like that or that, that way. Very cool. Good job, Samsung. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy paired up to my smartphone, and then we'll do a cleanup test of both the navigation challenge, we'll do a uh, pickup challenge, and I'll also show you the cleaning pattern. And then we'll jump back over here. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, we're back. We're going to go ahead and pair up the Samsung PowerBot to my smartphone. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Galaxy Note 9, and I have a screencast going on off to my left or right. Yes, it's all fancy editing. Alright, but it's all ball bearings here. So, with the smartphone, go ahead and jump into your App Store, either the Google Play Store or the 
Apple App Store and we're going to search Smart Things. That's basically the app that the robot uses to control or communicate with your phone. Um, Samsung uses that for all the devices like the refrigerators, hair dryers, their toothbrushes, basically everything. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and type in Smart Things and the first thing that pops up, very handy. And what you do is you're going to go ahead and install it and then once you have installed it's going to ask you to create an account. I have already done that for you guys and now look at this folks. The robot's turned on and it's actually asked me if I wanted to add the robot. Very convenient. I didn't have to do anything. So yes, let's go ahead and add this robot. This is the very first time I'm actually pairing up the robot so bear with me if I don't do it perfectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and press the start button here. And it's going to ask me where it is. Uh, it's out in the backyard there. No, I'll just do home, sure. And I'll put a new room. Let's call it my dining room. Yeah, we're in my dining room, right? Okay, we'll go ahead and click next there. Oh, we could actually add a wallpaper. That's really cool. Let's do something zenful. How about like these dead plants here? Yeah, I think that works. These dead plants. Yeah, sure. Okay, and let's keep on going. Click next. It seems like it's fairly easy. I'm just walking through the process and it looks like it's connecting to the robot. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to uh, push buttons down on the robot. I didn't have to shake the robot. I didn't have to pair it to the Wi-Fi. Pretty simple. Okay, so it looks like I need to uh, hold down the, what does it say? On the remote control that came with your robot, press and hold the recharge button until you hear the beep. Okay, the recharge button. So that's this home button right here, folks. Right there, let's go ahead and hold it down. I heard a beep. There we go. And it looks like it already found my Wi-Fi network. And since I already have a password within my phone, the robot was able to connect. Let's go ahead and just do that network. Wow, this is actually really simple. Um, the only thing you do need is to have the remote. So make sure you have the remote. I wonder if you could do it actually on the robot itself. Uh, I should have tried that. All right, there we go. It's all done. That was super simple. Wow, folks, that was really easy. Let's go ahead and just see if we can have this guy start cleaning for me. Pretty simple. I gotta say that took what? A minute? Two minutes? Let's see if I can stop this thing. So, that's another test. It looks like the glass doesn't affect the clip sensors, so that's a nice plus. Okay, let's just basically go over the interface on the smartphone side. Uh, it looks very similar to what you can do on the physical remote. Uh, you got your forward button here as I press down. Robot turns, you have to rotate it. So it's not too bad. Uh, you also have the auto button. You can do a spot clean. Looks like if you scroll down to the bottom, you can check the battery life. You also have the ability to change the different suction modes. You also can do repeat, which is kind of nice. So if you want the robot to go over the job twice, you can. Uh, it also it looks like you can do scheduling, but I think you have to have the robot on a charger to allow scheduling. You can check the history. And let's just go and check the settings here. So it looks like you only have one setting. You can either have the robot talk to you or make sound effects or you can mute it. So there's not a whole lot in there. Uh, let's see, country, you can just change your country of where you live. You can also do information. It just gives you a firmware version and a robot ID number. And last, we have a home wizard which allows you to uh, manage multiple devices, I believe, like gives you a weekly report. You can also check the user guide. So it kind of gives you basic information how to clean the filters and empty out the dustbin. Very nice. But I would say that Roomba or iRoomba has the cake on it. They actually did a really good job with both this and video animation. So I think Samsung did a good job, but iRoomba did a little bit better job. Okay, so that's just the basic layout of the Samsung PowerBot. Alright, let's jump into the cleaning right now.
So there's a trade-off. If you don't have a spinning side brush, there's no sky debris. But when you go along the edges, the robot performs poorly. I had the robot sound high power. Now let's go ahead and switch to low power. You can hear the difference. So I observed the navigation on the power bar, it's okay, uh, one thing to note is the robot creates a new map each time it runs, so it doesn't have an idea of how big the rooms are, so what it will do is do its trying to back and forth cleaning pattern, it may occasionally go into the other room and then go back into this room, so it's not a very efficient navigation, but the navigation is used for the recharge and resume, that's why the robot does have map, so once the robot dies, which usually is within an hour, it will go back to its charger, charge up, which takes about 3-4 to four hours, and then it will go back to where it left off. One thing to note is the power bot doesn't have a spinning side brush, it relies on suction and an extendable blade that goes out and pulls the debris away from the baseboard. Now keep in mind that the robot has to be perfectly aligned or the function doesn't work. Now let's go ahead and see how much the robot picked up. Okay, so let's show how much the power bot picked up. Now, this is my evil twin. He's wearing a red shirt to keep us apart. I'm actually the better version, so don't tell him that. All right, so it looks like the bin picked up a lot. It's about halfway full. Now, keep in mind that the cyclone technology takes up half the volume of the dustbin. And now, we're going to go ahead and dump it on the paper towel. Looks like my evil twin didn't know what he's doing, but it's okay. He's still new at this, and I'm still coaching him how to uh, properly film and edit. Now he's struggling with the dustbin, this is what I struggled with too, so hopefully Samsung can create an easier way to just push a single button to empty out the dustbin. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the navigation ability with obstacles. So for this demonstration, I actually put a couple pillows down, they're lightweight, also I put a lightweight chair down. The robot could technically fit in between the chair legs, and it does manage to get through. But I just want to see how sensitive the robot was, and what type of cleaning pattern the robot would do if it ran into an obstacle. So due to the shape of the power bot, it can only see in front of it and sometimes on top of the robot, it gets hung up and the robot doesn't realize it's dragging around the chair. Now I will give you a comparison of the Roborock S6 which is considered one of the best navigating robots for consumer based robot vacuums and you guys can see a difference in cleaning pattern and how it handles these obstacles. Whenever I start a robot vacuum, I like to survey the area that the robot's going to clean in just to make sure that the cords aren't on the ground or if there's any loose socks, cables, clothing. Any robot vacuum can get hung up on these, so to give it the best chance, always make sure to pick those up. Okay, looks like the power bot's done. Let's go ahead and get the Roborock S6 and see what it can do. So the Roborock likes to start out with a perimeter sweep and then it will fill in that perimeter with a back and forth cleaning pattern. During my extensive testing with these roll-off vacuums, I have found that round-shaped robots tend to do better with obstacles like chair legs. They can roll off easier, they don't get hung up as much as a, like a square robot or a D-shaped robot. So for one example, like the LG Core Zero R9, it's a very odd shape, but it compensates with having a both a laser system and camera system. So it's one of the best roll-off vacuums that can detect objects and it can compensate due to its irregular shape. But that's just one of the few exceptions. Like with the Samsung PowerBot, it just relies on a basic set of infrared sensors in the front and bump sensors. And that's why you can see that it can move the chair around. But with the Roborock, it has a LiDAR sensor. It also has a front physical bump sensor, which is very sensitive. So you can see that it only moved the pillow in the back slightly, but everything else the robot was able to avoid. What do you guys think? Do you think the Roborock S6 did a good job? Let me know down in the comments what your favorite robot vacuum is. Do you guys like the PowerBot? Okay, let's go ahead and try out the spot feature. We'll see how much powder the robot can pick up. You may notice that the robot defaults to its highest power level. The Samsung PowerBot has a very similar spot clean method where it would go into small squares. As it makes each pass, it actually expands the diameter of the square and keeps on going to a certain point and then it actually goes back to its target point whereas other robot vacuums will do a spiral outwards and then they spiral back in. I think that's the more efficient method because they do a double pass whereas on the Samsung it does a single pass.
Okay, so this is just a spot clean challenge with some powder. We'll see how much it picked up. Can you guys see that? Actually looks like it's full of powder there. It's not too bad, actually did a decent job. Okay, let's jump to the conclusion. Well, that was just a review of my Samsung PowerBot. This is the R740. So let me just basically go over what this is for, or who is this for. This robot's for someone who wants a great value, because at $270, this is Samsung's lowest price robot vacuum or PowerBot series. I think it offers a lot of great features. It offers the smart remote, it offers Wi-Fi so you can pair it to an app. I also like the fact that it was really easy to pair. In this video below, or in this demonstration, I actually paired it up within a few minutes. Super easy, and that was the first time I paired up the Samsung PowerBot to my smartphone. I do like the dustbin. It's super easy to remove. Now, one sore point is trying to remove the actual bin to empty it. It's kind of hard because you have to wiggle these two sides here, and it just, just takes a little work. I think they could make it a little bit easier. Now the navigation is okay, I would say it's probably on par with maybe the Shark IQ. It's probably not as good as like the Roomba or the Robua, but it gets the job done. So if you have a lot of obstacles, try to pick them up, give the Samsung PowerPod the best chance of cleaning. But the biggest thing for the Samsung PowerPod is its cleaning ability. It is a really strong suction and it does pick up a lot of great debris with its large extractor bar, super wide, and it also has that rubber twig that extends out. Helps remove the debris from the baseboard. Hopefully in the future, Samsung can add side brushes, maybe a dual side brushes to each of the edges. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, which is probably the biggest downside to the robot, is its shape. Yes, I like D-shaped robots, but due to the tallness or how high it sits up, and there's some odd uh, like things that stick out of the robot, it, they do get to hung up on chair legs. As you can see in that demonstration, it was moving around the chair. So that's one thing that Samsung can hopefully work on. Make it a little bit sleeker, but still have that long extractor bar. Okay, so that was just my review of the Samsung PowerBot. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Please smash the like button if you found like this video was helpful. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Nathan. This is Roller Masters. And I do a lot of cool robot vacuum reviews, unboxing, challenges, comparisons. You name it, I do everything. So I gotta go and have some more challenges for you guys. So I'll see you guys next time.